Mark chapter 15, beginning at verse 1. We read, As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the feastful he used to release a prisoner for them, any one for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again, Then what do you wish for me to do with the man that you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. Pilate asked him, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led Jesus into the courtyard of the palace that is the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort. They clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with the reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. May the Lord bless this reading of his word. Jesus has prayed, and Jesus has been betrayed. Jesus has been tried uh, in an inappropriate, um, not legal way. A decision has been made. Jesus has been arrested. He's been accused, namely a lot of, namely blasphemy. For answering when asked, are you the Messiah or the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? And Jesus said, I am. But there are a lot of other accusations leveled against Jesus. A lot of false testimony and false witnesses. And then we have Peter's denial. Denying having any understanding of who Jesus is. All of this has happened. In the night. And as Mark records the story, as morning breaks, the chief priests hold a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council, probably a similar council to which Jesus was brought before in chapter 14. Jesus is bound and led away, handed over to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? This is a question which gets asked in a mocking way, or in a way to instigate the crowds within Mark 15. Are you the king of the Jews? It's fascinating that Jesus was a king, the king of kings, yet he did not come to set up an earthly kingdom. He was the Messiah, the Christ. He was the King of the Jews in the sense that he was the one, the anointed one, the prophet. But in that regard, he is also the King of all. Are you the King of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things, and again, 
Many of the accusations that are brought against Jesus are not worthy of death. But this is what they were looking for. But the blasphemy that if Jesus is not the Christ that was recorded and stated earlier was enough to have him handed over to be crucified. So it's here before Pilate, the chief priests bring many of the accusations against him. Pilate asked Jesus again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no farther reply. Pilate was amazed. I wish we knew more of what was going on in the hearts and minds of some of these people in Mark's account. But Pilate is amazed by the silence of Jesus. Then we have a custom recorded in verse 6 and following that at the festival that it was customary it appears to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. And what is going on in the mind of Pilate is that he plans to hand, we assume, Jesus over to them to set him free. But we get an insight in verse 7 that a man called Barabbas was in prison. He was there for insurrection uh, in a situation in which uh, some people had died. The name Barabbas is potentially interesting. It could be Bar Abbas, uh, Bar Abba, the son of God, or son of the father, or Barabbas, uh, which would be a son of a great one or the great one. There might be some uh, intention here uh, in the gospel accounts of this name, Barabbas, the son of great one or the son of the father, uh, when in reality it is Jesus Christ who is the son of God. But regardless, Barabbas is in prison for murder, for insurrection leading to murder. The crowd came and began came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to the custom which was to let one person go. And again, as we noted, Pilate asked, answer them, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized, verse 10, for Pilate realized it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. Jealousy, envy, spite, Jesus was gaining popularity. The crowds had gone after Jesus. Not all the crowds, but some of the crowds. He was creating a stir. He was revealing a fuller truth than what the Pharisees, the scribes, the elders were teaching. He was disrupting their way of faith and their way of life. You want me to release for you the king of the Jews. But the chief priest in verse 11 stirred up the crowd. Here we have another crowd. This is not the crowd that has gone after Jesus in a good way, but one that has been set against him. The chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? And here again there's a uh, instigating or a stirring up, uh, if you will, uh, of the crowd. By saying that you call him the king of the Jews. They did not see Jesus as a king, especially not their king. They shouted back, crucify him. And Pilate we get an insight to slightly in Mark's gospel of the impossible situation he has been put in when he replies to the crucified Jesus with why, what evil has he done? Pilate does not see Jesus as worthy of crucifixion, worthy of being put to death, and that's so interesting, crucifixion, outside of being tremendously uh, painful, was a form of death 
that insti- uh, that uh, suggested um, that one had been betrayed and or abandoned by God. What has this man done? Be worthy of such a death. The death of a foreigner, a slave, an outcast, one despised by God himself. The reality is, is not is the question is not what had Jesus done, but rather what was Jesus about to do? Jesus has prayed in the Garden of the Gethsemane that this hour might pass from him, this cup be taken from him. This hour in this cup is the laying down of his life for the many. What evil has he done that he ought to be crucified? But they shouted out all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, Release Barabbas, son of the father, son of the great one, for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led Jesus into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. They clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. What is our relation to Jesus? How do we see ourselves in relation to him? We find earlier Judas betraying. We find Peter denying. We find the crowds instigated the call for him to be crucified. We find Pilate wishing to satisfy the crowd siding with them. We find the soldiers mocking Jesus kneeling down before him, but doing so uh, in hypocrisy and or mockery. They don't really see him as king of the Jews, especially not as their king. How do we see Jesus? Do we see him as one rejected by God? Do we see him as one despised? Do we see him as one who has done evil deserving death? Or do we see him as one? As is recorded in the Gospel of John, chooses to lay his life down for the sake of others. Because he is a righteous one. Jesus was building a different kingdom. As King of Kings and Lord of Lords. What does it look like for us in our lives? Though in the appearance of people and of this world to maybe be seen as despised and rejected, to know that that's only the case in the eyes of the world, but in the eyes of God. We are right where he desires us to be, in his will as a servant of this world, laying down our lives for the sake of the building of another kingdom. Let the Lord lead us in to the reality of Christ in our midst today to his praise, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.